I want you to turn with me tonight, please, to the eighth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. And we're in Luke's Gospel tonight, chapter 8. And it's from this portion of the Word of God where God's message comes to us this evening. Luke's Gospel, chapter 8. And commencing, please, to read from verse 4. Luke 8 and verse number 4. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorn sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he, cri he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the Word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. From day one, from day one, when man and woman were created by God, man's mind and man's conscience, man's heart and man's soul has been the target and has been under the constant influence of the devil. Satan tonight, my dear unsaved friend, the devil tonight, my dear unsaved friend, tonight is the one who wants your soul. Man's immortal soul tonight, your immortal soul, my dear unsaved friend, is the target is the target for your immortal soul concerning the devil. You may say to me, George, I don't believe in the devil. I believe as there's a God, and I believe there's a heaven, but I don't really believe in the devil. Well, you know, my friends, this evening, you may believe tonight, or maybe think that tonight, only a man that's totally blind believes that there's no devil. I can tell you something tonight, friends. God believes in the devil. You read Job chapter 1, you'll find where the devil speaks to God, and you'll find in Job chapter 1 where God speaks to the devil. So God believes that there's a devil. And you read tonight in the Gospels account tonight, and you'll find that the Lord Jesus believed in the devil. You remember the Lord's temptation in the wilderness? 
You remember the devil spoke to the Lord Jesus. I will the Lord Jesus spoke to the devil. So the Lord Jesus believed in the devil. And not only God believed in the devil, and not only did Christ believe in the devil, the Apostle Paul believed in the devil. Do you remember what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4? If our gospel it is, is hid, it is hid to them that are lost, whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. My dear unsaved friend tonight, the devil this evening wants to blind you tonight and is blinding you tonight. But thank God the power of the gospel of Christ can set you free. Paul said, Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine in unto them. You know, friend, you tell me tonight, oh, well, I believe in God. Well, I'll tell you, friends, tonight the devil believes in God. James chapter 2 and verse 19, we read, Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. My friend, God's not condemning you that you believe in God. Thou doest well. But the Bible also says, The devils also believe and tremble. Oh, friend, if you would only tremble at the very thought of God tonight. You know, God's to be feared this evening. And you know, friend, this evening in, in, in Mark's cha Gospel chapter 5 and verse 7, you remember what the devil said to Christ that day? What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? Luke chapter 4 and verse 21, the demon said, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. You know, people tell me this tonight. Maybe you believe this. But your I believe in God. Surely that makes me a Christian. Sure, I believe in heaven. Does that not mean I'm going to heaven? My friend, I'll tell you something tonight. There's a lot of drunkards about Kiel. Kiel believes there's a God, but tell me this, does that make them Christians? The devil believes in heaven. What did he say? I shall ascend into heaven. Tell me something. Like, does the devil go into heaven? Of course he's not. My dear unsaved friend tonight, there's a lot of people tonight, do you know what they've done this morning? There's people tonight in the north of Ireland, or the, the people this morning in the north of Ireland prayed more lies than the told lies. Did you get that? They prayed more lies than the told lies. Throughout our province this morning, we had all types of people praying, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Listen, friend, God's not your Father if you're not saved. Boy, sometimes I go to funerals there and you have all sorts gathered around you. There's a man maybe standing beside you and he's a drunkard. A man at a funeral, he's rattling off the Lord's Prayer as if he was saved. Now listen, friends. If you're not saved tonight, God is not your Father. God's your Maker. But God's not your Father, love. The Lord Jesus himself said, and I said this this morning, and I'm going to say it again. He said not to drunkards. He said not to murderers. He said to the religious people of this day. Do you know what he said to them? If God were your father, you would love me. And listen, my dear unsaved friend. If God was your father, you would love Christ. If God were your father, you would repent of your sin. If God were your father, you'd believe in him for salvation. But you know what the Lord Jesus said? Ye are of your father the devil. Now, you don't see a friend tonight. That comes from the lips of the blessed Savior. Spiritually speaking tonight, ye are of your father the devil. Tell me this, does that not trouble you? Does that not concern you tonight? 
your immortal soul that one day will be summoned out of your body at death tonight at this very moment is being held tightly in the grips of Satan himself. Tonight he has you chained. Tonight he has you bound. Tonight he has you blinded. Oh, dear unsafe friend, this is where your immortal soul is at this very moment. It's in the very grasp and in the very clutch of the devil's hand. And you know, friend, tonight, that's how you live at this very moment in time. But tell me this tonight, is that the way? Is, are you prepared to live like that? Are you prepared to, 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 to go on like that? I'll tell you this, are you prepared to die like that? To die being in the devil's heart. I come now to my text this evening, and you'll find it. You'll find it in the twelfth verse of our Scripture reading this evening. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Now, there's three questions I want to ask about that text tonight. Then cometh the devil. Now, that's my text. Then cometh the devil. Now, here's my three questions. Who for? What for? And why for? Who for? Who does the devil come for? Does the devil come for the drunkard sitting in the bar stool? Listen, do you know who the devil comes for? He comes for people like you, just where you sit tonight in the gospel meeting. Do you know something, friends, when I was in the world? The devil never bothered me. The devil never bothered me when I sat on a bar stool. The devil never bothered me when I was burling young lassies around a dance floor. The devil never bothered me, friends, when I was getting into trouble. Do you know when the devil began to bother me? The devil began to bother me when I began to hear words whereby I must and can be saved. Now, who does the devil come to? The devil comes to them that hear. My friend tonight, there's one thing the devil fears tonight, and the devil fears the Word of God. The devil fears the gospel tonight. Do you know what the devil believes? The devil himself believes. The devil himself believes that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation, and the devil believe, believes in the power of the gospel, friends. He believes in the power of the gospel. Then cometh the devil. There's a heart the devil delights in. Listen to me. There's a heart tonight that the devil delights in. And tonight that's a hardened heart. Tonight that's a hardened heart. The Lord Jesus said, those by the way say, let me tell you something about the wayside tonight. The wayside is a place that's often trodden upon. When you trod upon a place often, what happens to that place? That place gets hard. It gets pressed down. And you know something, friend, tonight, and I say this with a, an aching heart. I fear for the people of the kingdom of Moab. I fear for the kingdom of more. I don't believe there's a people in the north of Ireland tonight and the gospel hasn't hit their hearts time and time and time and time again. And tonight many people in the kingdom of mourn 
their hearts are like the wayside that become hard. Boys, I remember when I worked in Derek Loon's garage, I remember it well. Henry Bell was, he was, he, he was working on an exhaust pipe that was on the vase, and he heated the, he heated the bracket with a settling to get it loosened. And he chopped and he hammered and he chopped and he hammered and he got a half-inch spanner and he spun it off. He says, and he took it in his hand like that. He says, here, George, hold that a minute till I get this fixed. I held it and I dropped it right away. Boys, I thought it took the skin of me hand. He says, pick it up there. What are you strong? He says, pick it up and now be a bit of your own man. Hey, we you knew it has one spit and twice. Hey, he picked it up again. Oh, says, hey, and says, hey, I can't touch that. Oh, he says, what kind of a child are you? And he lifted up the, he lifted up the, uh, the, the bracket and he says, here you are, hold it in your heart. He says, hey, Henry, tell you what you do. You just put it in the bench there. Man, I'm telling you, man, he held it in his hand. My wee soft hands just couldn't hold it at all. Listen, friend, man's hard heart can get like that. My wee tender, soft skin, friends, felt the pain of the heat coming from that bracket. But a man's hand tonight that was hard and rough, it took no effect. Do you know there's people in the kingdom of mourning? I fear them tonight because that's the way their hearts are left. They've heard a time and time and time again, and their hearts tonight have become hard. What does the Bible say four times? You know what the Bible says four times? Today, if you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Tonight, my dear unsafe friend, if this is running off you like water of a duck's back, I fear for you tonight. I fear for you. And the gospel, friend, tonight to these people, it's like those that fall upon the wayside. I'll tell you, the seed that fell upon the wayside left it easy for the fowls to come and to pick it up and take it away. I'll tell you, the, the seed that's sown to the hardened heart, I'm telling you, the devil doesn't have a hard job to come and take it away. You see, the hardened heart tonight, the hardened heart, becomes immune to conviction. It comes immune to fear. It comes immune to the message of the gospel. And it becomes so hard, the gospel no longer takes effect. No friend tonight, there's a verse in Proverbs Proverbs 29 and verse 1, listen to it. He being often reproved. What does he do? Hardeneth his neck. Shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. And my friend tonight, listen to me. If you're here in this meeting and God is speaking and God is getting through to you and tonight you've been troubled about your sin and you're troubled about death and you're troubled about meeting God and you're troubled about dying without Christ, listen, that's God speaking. But be warned, because then will come the devil. And the devil will do his dirty best. He'll do his dirty best to stop you from getting saved. He'll do his dirty best to stop you from coming out for Christ. Listen to it. He'll do his dirty best to damn your immortal soul in the fires of hell. He will. Then cometh the devil. Who for? They that hear. Then cometh the devil. Not only who for, then cometh the devil. What for? To take away the word out of their hearts. Boys, I'm telling you tonight, you take a meeting where the gospel is being preached, I'm telling you tonight, the devil's up like a shot. The devil's up like a shot. And the devil, friend, tonight will do everything in his power to take away and to snatch away that seed tonight, that seed that brings light and it brings life and it brings liberty. You know, friend, I want just to take you now to where the girls took you. I want to take you now to the old rugged cross at Calvary. 
And I want you to see your sin in all its fullness tonight. As you gaze upon the crucified Christ of Calvary's cross, if you want to see man's sin tonight, you want to see your sin tonight, you gaze to that center cross at Calvary because there man's sin is displayed in all its awfulness. Friend, if you were to gaze upon the Savior tonight with nails in His hands and feet, with thorns upon His brow, His visage marred more than any other man, listen to me, that's your sin and my sin. And friend, He died there, and He suffered there, and He bled and died, and He took the guilty sinner's place. Listen to me, not only do you see your sin in all its awfulness, but you see God's love in all its fullness. For God so loved your immortal soul that, his, that He gave His only begotten Son, my dear unsafe friend, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loved the world of sinners lost, ruined by the fall, salvation full at highest cost. Glory to God, He offers free to all. Ah, but my friend tonight, he comes to snatch away that message, to take away that message out of your heart tonight, because I'll tell you this, it's a message like this, and it's words like this that the devil knows, that the devil knows it will bring you life and bring you liberty. Then cometh the devil. You know, friend, tonight, listen, the, the devil knows. The devil knows how to take the word out. Do you remember Genesis chapter 3? Do you remember he came in, the, in, the, in dwelling the serpent and he said to Eve, Hath God's head? No, friend, one of the great ways the devil hasn't taken the word out of your heart tonight is by the art of deception. He's the great deceiver. I remember witnessing to a fellow out in the street one time began to talk to him about his sin, and he began to rattle off, I'm not a sinner, I do this, I do that, I do the other thing. Tell you the truth, it felt like giving him a crackerjack pencil at the end of it all. Oh, aye, but that's the way it is. That's how the devil has people blinded. And I wonder tonight, is that the way you're blinded? Because I'll tell you this, friend, tonight, the Word of God that the devil seeks to snatch from your heart tonight tells you this. We all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. The Word of God that the devil seeks to snatch from your heart tonight tells us. God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. The very word that the devil seeks to take from your heart tonight, this is what he wants to take away. He wants to take away that word that tells you neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And my friend tonight, that's the word, and that's the message and that's the what for. The devil tonight seeks to take out of your heart. Another deception. He not only deceives the truth, the devil deceives time. He deceives time. You know, friend, tonight, listen. You'll read in the Acts of Apostles a man called Felix, and you'll read when Paul preached to him, it says that Felix trembled. Felix trembled. My friend, wouldn't you think tonight a man who would tremble under the Word of God tonight? That man's not far from the kingdom of God. And tonight, maybe tonight, there's someone in this meeting and you can remember a day only too well when perhaps you sat in a gospel meeting and you trembled. Sleepless nights was your experience. Your sin troubled you. At every hand, guilt stared at you in the face. I, unlike Felix, you trembled. You don't tremble tonight, but that's the problem. 
And that's the fearful thing. Like Felix, you haven't trembled since. In the Acts of the Apostles, you read about a man called King Agrippa. He said to Paul that day, Almost, Paul, almost, almost thou persuadest me to become a Christian. Tell me, am I exposed? Or is God exposing such a one here tonight? Ah, there was a day when I was almost persuaded. Tonight it doesn't affect me. Maybe tonight, maybe tonight it does affect you. Maybe tonight there is one that trembles. Trembles tonight under the fear of God, the Holy Ghost tonight. Under the Word of God tonight, perhaps you tremble. Tonight, perhaps if you're at the borderline, we're almost, I almost, George, almost, thou persuadest me to become a Christian. And my friend, beware tonight, because to such, to such comes the devil to take away that word out of your heart. I'm going to finish with the last question. Why for? Who for? What for? Why for? Lest they should believe and be saved. Do you know what the devil believes in it? The devil believes you can be saved. You know somebody believes more you can be saved than not, but you maybe believe yourself. You know, friend, tonight, listen to me. My friend, the devil knows you can be saved. The devil believes you can be saved. The devil knows tonight that you could repent of your sin and come and put your trust in Christ, but the devil wants to stop you tonight. Oh, friend, don't let the devil stop you. He has stopped you, bro, uh, he has stopped you dear, long enough. Listen, sir, tell me this. He stopped you long enough. Don't let him damn your soul. Don't let him damn your immortal soul in the caverns of the doom and the dam. He knows tonight that when the gospel is being preached and the Word of God is hitting your heart, the devil knows and the devil believes that this is the very moment where you could be translated from darkness into light and from death into life. But the big question is tonight, are you going to let him damn you? Are you going to let him drag you to the caverns of the damned while there was one that was crucified to Calvary's cross? Are you going to let him tonight? You know the devil had a big committee meeting one night. All the demons were summoned into attendance. And the matter for discussion was, how can we deceive the people to see that they're lost? One demon jumps up and says, Mr. Devil, I'll go down and I'll tell them that there's no God, I'll tell them that there's no heaven, I'll tell them that there's no hell. Surely, Mr. Devil, that lie will tell them and will damn them. And the devil said, that's good. But you know, you can't bluff man. Man knows there's a God somewhere. Now, that doesn't just tick the box. Another demon, he jumps to his feet and he says, I'll tell you what I can do. I'll go down and I'll tell everybody that God is a God of love. And I'll tell them that, listen, God will never send any man to hell when it comes to the end of the day. And, you know, maybe they'll believe that lie. And the devil says, that sounds good. It sounds good. But, you know, man knows there has to be judgment. No, that won't tick my box either. And the third boy old jumps up and he says, Mr. Devil, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go down and I'll tell the people, yes, Yes, they need to be saved. And I'll go down and tell them, I'll tell them that Christ did die on the cross. And I'll tell them there is a heaven to gain. And I'll tell them there is a hell to shun. But I'll tell them there's plenty of time. The devil jumps up and says, that's it, that's it. Tell them that, tell them that. And we'll damn them. 
And how many tonight has gone to their eternal grave listening to that lay? There's time. There's time. Then cometh the devil. But God's word says tonight, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Listen to what Paul the apostle said, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Listen to me, friend. Who are you going to believe tonight? Who are you going to believe? The one that wants to damn you or the one that wants to deliver you? Friend, it's your choice. Friend, I cannot make this any simpler. I cannot make this any plainer. But my friend, listen, do you not realize tonight you're only on this earth a very short time? Do you not realize tonight that Christ died on the cross for you? Do you not realize tonight before the night's out you could be dead and gone? You could be into eternity. And remember, ask yourself, eternity where? It'll be an awful thing, love. An awful thing. For you to sit in this gospel meeting tonight and being warned. Being warned. And you too, sir, it'll be an awful thing to sit in this gospel meeting and be warned and to ignore, to ignore the pleadings of the gospel and to die and to be lost, lost forever. Whose voice Whose voice will you hearken to tonight? I'll ask that question again. Whose voice will you hearken to tonight? Is God speaking? Is God calling? Friend tonight, if God is speaking, you be warned tonight. Then cometh the devil. And he'll tell you tonight, the big fella up there is only in need. You don't listen to him. Or he'll perhaps maybe tell you, there's plenty of time. He's writing what he's saying, but listen, you have too much life to live. Friend, tonight, who are you going to hate? God's truth or the devil's lay. I'll leave you with one verse of Scripture, and it comes from the lips of my blessed Savior. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Now, let's all take a wee moment and bow in prayer together, please. Every head bowed, every heart God's people, now you pray. Friend, tonight if God has been speaking to your soul, let me tell you tonight, God has been speaking in mercy. And friend, tonight, heed no other voice, only His. The devil will come. Mark my words tonight, the devil will come. And he'll do everything he can to take away that word out of your heart. Maybe saying to you, you don't go home and tell your husband you're saved or your wife or your children or your parents. He'll do everything to bluff you out of getting saved tonight. But thank God one day Satan to Jesus must bow. Friend, tonight, I plead, I plead, come to Christ. 
He loves you. He died to save you. Come tonight. While he calls. While his voice is clearly heard. Lord, tonight we just pray. Put a seal upon this meeting. And drive away the devil. And pray tonight for deciding grace, for we pray in our Saviour's name.